Hello and welcome to the first POPS Anderson Lectures. Tonight we're celebrating 25 years of POPS providing support services to offenders' families and we're also acknowledging the role that Frieda Anderson, my predecessor, had in developing those services over that 25 years. Tonight we're looking at the role that families can play in supporting offenders to stop re-offending. We have academics that's going to look at the role families play in desistance and we have two speakers including Farida who are going to look at the lived experience. We are hopeful that the Anderson Lectures will become an annual event and that each year we'll take a subject matter, a topic or discussion and allow the audience to take part in debate and raise important issues so that we can continue learning from the experiences of those that we work with. And gradually, through the course of studying the phenomenon of people moving away from crime, we came to the position, most of us, most criminologists, of regarding this as a process, a dynamic process of human development in social context. You theorise about it, come up with your models, but part of we, it's incumbent upon us to translate it so that we can have people in our community that return back as fathers, as men, as brothers, as uncles, and can actually feel human again. People stay in prison for longer, and the real punishment there for most women certainly is a separation from their children, um, and for many others a separation from their families. We've heard the, the importance of the families for keeping people connected, for keeping people sane. We do know the statistics, which are that 45% of prisoners lose all contact with families while they're in prison, which is absolutely terrible. Going forward for the future, what POPs would like to see is the status of families of offenders being raised, for them to be acknowledged, for them to be supported, and for them to be valid in the whole reducing reoffending agenda. Everybody in this room, if you only take away one thing from me, is to understand the importance of relationship in achieving any form of success. And I believe, first, you involve the family, and two, you involve the offender because resolutions have to start with both those. I believe with what POPs has achieved, uh, differences are being made every single day. If we hadn't got the support we needed, I don't know where we'd both be now. My message is this, it, it's imperative if people do have families and friends that the more that POPs and other organisations of the Ministry of Justice can facilitate meaningful visits and contacts through email and phone, the much more likely it's going to be that those people will rehabilitate themselves. The keys to desistance. I think that um, that it's not. It's about not just focusing on the uh, offence. It's about focusing on a holistic range of things that um, make a person a person, not an offender an offender, but make a person a person. In regards to desistance, I feel that the key elements are uh, hope and motivation is the, the key, the point. If an offender feels that they have something to give back to the society which they've harmed and they can demonstrate hope and create opportunities to demonstrate hope, then I think we're on the pathway there. I think it's really important to have people with a shared experience, an understanding of what that process means, um, what the challenges are regarding making those life-changing choices, I suppose, and um, support and challenge mechanisms, not just support for the sake of it, but you know, families and individuals and groups that can really challenge behave, negative behaviour but in a supportive way and probably a lot of love as well. And of course um, maintaining family ties, I mean it goes without saying how important that is but in a prison perspective I know how difficult it is when those family relations aren't working because they have a, a huge impact on institutional behaviour so I know how important that um, prisoners consider that. I think it's really important that if we want to break the, the 
um, the cycle of offending or keep people out of offending in the first place, but in particular to break the, 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 the cycle that we, we've got to recognise that the importance of that. It means actually having a different relationship, I think, between all the criminal justice agencies and the supportive family, because in the past, um, uh, the, the criminal justice system is very offender-focused. It doesn't really focus on the victim, but it doesn't really focus on those who can help the offender um, back out of the situation they've got themselves into. I think Community Change Foundation does contribute significantly to the assistance in that it gives people a viable alternative. We have a number of people within CCF who have been through those life-changing sort of processes, come out the other side and now operate as professionals. I think there's nothing better than your peers being able to show you the way when you're in a really difficult set of circumstances and maybe can't see the light at the end of the tunnel yourself. I'm lucky enough to have two family support workers working on my team and their role is absolutely fundamental to the work that we do on the ICO. Um, both family members work alongside the families when we engage with the offender, whether that be in a custodial element or in the community, and their work absolutely drives the order forward in a very solution-focused way. We have a huge number of examples of cases that benefit from POP support not just informing our risk assessments and risk management, but helping that offender to bed back into the community which they were rejected or plucked from. When we're accessing and helping an offender to find a home again. Um, we, we start with the, with the family. Um, but I think we can't just use them as the, as the kind of um, a, a vehicle, a conduit for, uh, for kind of um, the, you know, just getting a home, just meeting our own objective. I think it's got to be more meaningful than that, hasn't it? And it's got to be more genuine than that. And it's got to be a genuine connection, a genuine kind of um, uh, partnership between the, the, the offender and the, and the, fa and the family. To, and then the home is the result of that for me, I think. I think families are absolutely central to, to that situation. If we can, if we can weave the, the idea that families can be part of the solution, into the whole process, then maybe we can begin to shift some of these problems. The really important thing to remember is that, you know, whilst people go to prison, very few people are going to be in prison forever. Most people are going to come out, they may come out after six months, after a year, after 10 years, they're still going to come out of prison. Um, we've got to make sure that when they come out, they're coming out to a world that's there to, to help them rebuild, not a world that's going to send them back to prison again. And if we're going to do that, families are fundamental.